Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a summary of the monthly report that was released in February 2021. This goes over what Cloud Imperium have been working on recently over the last few weeks and what they're working on now for the first quarter of 2021 and I suppose beyond for Star Citizen's persistent universe. Environments are in full production with new outpost points of interest archetypes which are now in white box. I'm assuming this is the colonialism new homesteads for AI and it looks like they are using that to push towards player bases eventually. It's not immediately player bases. It's not going to be for players to live in uh, straight away in the verse when they add these areas, but they're going to flesh out the game a lot more with more interesting sort of outpost type setups that aren't just the very basic blocky modular ones. And they're moving on to making a small modular architecture kit that can be easily expanded to add diversity as the needs arise when they place these. Crusader's Landing Zone Orison now has the arcade spaceport exterior, Voyager bar interior, and green circle habs all in the final stages of their development and habs and other structures are currently in progress. The location also saw lighting work improving the spaceport interior there. They are building the scripts for announcer lines there as well now, so you know the things you'll hear over the tannoys, um, uh, that sort of jazz. They have been making props for both Orison but also mining modules, whatever exactly they are. The Stanton system polish past continued, the harvestable entity library has been expanded, and work on cave entrances that can accommodate vehicles, whether they be uh, ground vehicles or ships, um, based on the size of them, whether they're sinkholes or larger cave entrances, has has started. The Planet content team have started work on developing a pipeline for generating new and updated asteroids as well. Obviously, uh, Pyro is going to have different types of asteroids in it, um, more angular ones, I believe, sharper, pointier ones than Stanton has, but obviously we need a load of um, Stanton uh, asteroids in the Aaron Halo, because the Aaron Halo is a giant asteroid field. VFX work began on the moons of Pyro, which involved gathering information on details such as climate values, how windy and how hot it is. They also investigated some requirements for thruster wind volumes as they're planning to move to a more physical base setup for vehicle landing dust effects. So prettier landings basically when it kicks up the dust, uh, making use of the wind volumes that were added to thrusters last year. Uh, steady progress has been made on fire hazards as well and gas cloud tech continued to receive support. I'm really looking forward to fire hazards because I want damage control, I want fire extinguishers, we know they are working on actual working fire extinguishers, we know that they're working on fires that will break out on ships and will consume oxygen and could cause lots of knock-on effects, so that's pretty cool. And with gas cloud stuff, uh, we know that there's going to be weather type phenomena and gas clouds um, used for clouds, but also gas cloud tech used for gas giants and gas cloud tech used for nebula and the coil and lots of other things. And they're all sort of partly related, but they're not exactly the same thing. For those of you excited about animals, the tech animation team kicked off 2021 creating animation rigs for creatures that we found across the various locations in game. We know that animals are in active production and are coming to the game soon um, with things like the space cow being prioritized, but we do know that they're working on pyro crab and uh, a yeti for micro tech. Uh, gameplay work has also continued on several features, including hacking. We know there's going to be a mini game associated with that. Recent discussions with that feature and more have been uh, talking about how to scale difficulty with considerations of size of the play area, number of AI opponents, and randomly generated content. They want the game to be full of this, uh, but it's not technically random. It is based on the um, sort of dynamic universe sim eventually. It will be anyway. In regard to hacking, the features team said this mini game is shaping up to have a number of interesting strategic options and is looking very promising. So looking forward to that. It might just be a little pipe game. It might be bejeweled, um, but it'll be something interesting as a mini game on our UI HUD um, and it will play into the game. Uh, work continued on the Reputation Moby Glass app mentioned in the last report, basically a way of showing the player what their reputation is with any given organization. And they've been going, oh, what are we going to expand this into the future? So they've been considering that and how complex reputation might be later. Uh, the engineers have also begun implementing the feature itself, giving the team a deeper look into the app's functionality. So we should actually start to see it relatively soon. The team also resumed work on the asset management 
a Moby Glass app, which will give players an overview of their items and allow them to filter by various categories. Basically, you're about to see where all your ships are and all your gear is and all that sort of jazz and where all your, your assets are in the universe, which is incredibly important. Designs for that are currently being finalized in preparation for a quick turnaround with the goal of launching an Alpha 3.14. So that's the Q2 2021 patch. Work was mostly completed on a new variant of the delivery missions that take advantage of quantum sensitive cargo that we've seen in Xenothreat. And they've been working on a time sensitive cargo version of that mission as well. They're also working out how to bring various other features into missions like body dragging and trolley push and pull, hacking. Uh, the tech side of the spawn closet feature moved into its final stages as well. So the team began prototyping areas that can be implemented into game. Um, so this will have um, NPC security forces and reinforcements and all that sort of jazz being able to be spawned in and out much more easily, as well as social AI, all, all the NPCs that they want. Uh, they are well on the way for meeting their target for getting docking in the game for 3.13. So this includes ship to station docking and the first stage of ship to ship docking it's not true ship to ship docking so the hard dock ship to ship dock in this um, instance for 3.13 is the rsi constellation with its parasite ship the uh, p52 p72 the owner of the constellation will need to accept a docking request from that ship uh, for it to be able to dock it seems missile updates to ifc s2 are being worked on um, this is going to have fully controlled target tracking and guidance code to ensure missiles behave more predictably and don't oscillate around targets as they do currently. They talked about vehicle and ship naming. So we don't really know to what extent players are going to be able to customize the names of their ships in 3.13. What front end for that um, will, will there be? And um, we've been led to believe that you can change the name of your ship. And um, will it be written on the side? Well, they say um, that they've been working to get the names on the sides of select vehicles, but it doesn't really mention there if it will be, yeah, you can just fully type in the name of your ship and it appears on the side as a decal at that stage. It could be that you name your ship and um, when someone scans you or targets you, they see the name of your ship. And so I we'll have to wait and see exactly uh, what's going on there. Player Relations began building their infrastructure to support more players and bigger events. The systemic systems and tools teams continued to work on quantum simulations, so the Dynamic Universe Simulation Service, and they're integrating that along with new technologies they're going to be sharing this with the community soon, apparently. We do know that Tony Z said they wanted to have another uh, updated demo uh, on the Quanta system, on the Quantum system stuff, so looking forward to that. UI began programming the underlying systems that will allow them to work on the new star map, radar, interior map, and mini map interfaces. I want maps. I want ways of knowing where I am in the game. I want to be able to see where I am on ships and where I am in an outpost and where I am on a moon or a planet, and I want a new star map. I don't want a fiddly star map that doesn't work. So please, please, I hope this leads to a better set of Moby Glass apps and star map app and deeper ways of being able to share our locations and find out where we are in game. And it sounds like that is the plan. They also made improvements to scanning and pinging systems to ensure detecting far away or hidden entities is more intuitive and fun, as well as um, getting those details about them. These improvements will also be making their ways to players that are going to be um, scanning on foot as well. So I like the fact that we'll have that on foot. They completed some concept work on medical outfits and backpacks for physical inventory, as well as various new armor sets, which completed concept work, but also they prepared some for a 3.13 incremental patch, which I expect will be those new armors, some new new armors will be coming out for Fleet Week in May. That makes sense. They continued work on the new clothing, the industrial clothing for refinery decks, and Orison uh, clothing was developed as well. The Vault Parallax Electron Rifle is grey box complete. It looks a bit weird, but cool. Uh, the Ultraflex Novia crossbow progressed through final art and they've also been working on the ammo mag um, stripping feature which will allow you to sort of take ammo out of another magazine or gun or whatever and put it uh, into your mag I was not assuming that it's ballistic ammo. Uh, they have added a new healing multi-tool attachment. They've sort of tried to future-proof this as well with the multi-tool. Um, so they've updated its uh, battery and resource canister so it can be uh, properly detachable. Uh, work also began on a new standalone Great Gat industrial cutter tool uh, that was initially required for Squadron 42 but will be making its way into the Persistent Universe. And the expectation here is that it will allow freeform cutting on some surfaces but also allow you to do some form of salvage in the future, cutting away 
sort of a weapon from a ship or um, opening up a compartment so you can take out a component uh, but also it could be used for um, breaking down doors and things like that. Um, ships and vehicles, they have continued working on the Nova Tank and are really pushing to make its target release date of 3.13 and they are making progress in grey box for that currently. The Crusader C2 Hercules was handed to downstream teams and progress was made on the A2 and M2 variants. Specifically, the A2 received a control room for the turrets, while the M2 gained a jump seat room for the crew of ground vehicles. There is a redacted ship that is moving to its final stages. Potentially, I would suspect, spoilers, uh, it to be the 400i. Uh, the Constellation Taurus's work is progressing and looks set to release in Q2 as well. Uh, we know that they've been working on another skin variant of a ship or uh, a holiday. Uh, maybe it's Valentine's, maybe it's Triggerfish, April Fool's. There is also Chinese New Year and St. Patrick's Day too. Actually, uh, we have actually um, heard of them working on the latter too. So it does make sense that it would probably be for them. Work continued on the Firestorm Kinetics Colossus Moab, mother of all bombs, assumedly for the A2, but uh, we do know that there's going to be bombs and mines and, uh, and other stuff coming uh, to the game for other ships as well. And they began working on an all new weapon too. Uh, let's talk about some AI stuff. So AI teams have been reorganized now. The departments are now split by content features and tech. AI content creates behaviors, usables, and other related content. AI features implement project features, for example, new combat behaviors and ship maneuvers. Uh, AI tech handles all core functionalities that require a more structural design. They've been testing various AI subsumption events, which should now lead to some big optimizations in regards to the latency amount of and memory usage of NPCs. They have been working on archetype AI behaviors for engineer, hygiene, hawker, and tourist. So um, let's talk about these in a little bit more detail. Engineer behaviors. Um, that's getting um, NPCs to interact with wall panels in ships and stations so they can inspect and replace damaged fuses, stuff like that. Hygiene behaviors allow NPCs to use toilets, sinks and showers. Hawker is for street vendors that um, has uh, people manning the various stands at landing zones and acting appropriately. Tourist behavior deals with characters going to and traveling around areas to look at points of interest. They are now working on eating and drinking and vending machine and arcade machine use for leisure behaviors. Work was done on AI pilot tactics. Some pilots will choose safer approaches during combat while others will show off and use specialist maneuvers. AI are going to be able to use quantum travel properly and then switch to combat modes when needed, switch in and out of that. They are better at dodging too, apparently now, uh, and they added a weapon confidence stat which is used to control AI's firing pace. Not sure if that's um, just for ships or uh, on the ground or both. Uh, engine wise, we will still be getting the Gen 12 renderer and Vulcan one day, and they've been working on that as well as getting various other engine and back-end updates and optimizations in. I'll go over a few of them briefly. Geometry instancing, the first part of three uh, of Bits of work for this have been completed, uh, so this will allow for better memory usage and performance, as well as SCPU resources being needed. In fact, it's, that's what most of the stuff here is. It's a load of optimization and improvements for things like soft bodies, ragdolls, volumetric clouds, EVA, better usage of CPU instructions, and much more. Uh, we know they've been working on an updated options menu for the game as well, which I'm hoping will have graphics um, settings on it. Uh, several network synchronization issues for wheeled vehicles were investigated, which resulted in initial fixes and a plan for an improved net sync that takes the environment as well as physical movement into account. If you do not want janky vehicles, if you want a better Daymar rally, if you want to drive around on vehicles and planets and go, this is a really nice experience, uh, then that feature um, will hopefully be good, um, or at least uh, improvements to the engine. Uh, this is slated for implementation in Q2, um, so probably for the 3.14 patch. Research into stabilizing moving platforms, elevator floors, cargo lifts in a more reliable way was also completed. Again, super important. Water buoyancy and ragdolls saw more work. The Super P cache is being tested by QA as well. And um, obviously, they are working towards uh, iCache, um, server meshing, uh, and all that sort of jazz as well. Although iCache has been subsumed in uh, to the uh, greater server meshing and persistent streaming uh, feature. But uh, that's it for the monthly report this time. But what do you think? We know, actually, that Cloud Imperium are working on 8 to 10 events this year. What do you think they'll be? We know some of them. The Xeno Threat um, 
uh, event, which is coming really soon. Uh, the Nine Tails Lockdown, Fleet Week, which is in May, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which is in November. Um, but what are you looking forward to the most in 2021? Be that feature, ship, or location. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway and February is no different. This month is for a Mercury Star Runner. It's a multi-role ship, but also a solid data and cargo runner and flyable now in game. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during a month. Details below. I'm also a massive shill for NordVPN. If you are looking for a VPN service, and you should, then NordVPN acts as a fleet of ships protecting your data from prying eyes while also providing privacy like a ship would enjoy the interwebs without borders securely and safely. Use the links below for discount. I can't promise it will make your life better, but I can imply that. Also, there is Game Glass. Do you have a touchscreen device that you want to use as a diegetic controller or interactive panel for Star Citizen and other games? Check out Game Glass. It's free for life for the basic version, and you can buy additional shards or functionality and, or subscribe for more as well. A special thank you for everyone that goes the extra mile to become a channel member or Patreon, as well as just liking, subscribing, or sharing these videos. If you would like to further support the channel, then please consider using the YouTube join button below my videos and becoming a board gamer channel member. You'll get some exclusive content each month, as well as badges that appear in the comments section of videos and emotes that you can use and all that sort of jazz. Thank you so much for checking out my content. You take care, and I hope to see you in the verse.